requirements that were allowed that I had to go through too. And semi-detached homes does not apply in this, in this little neighborhood. Turkey Point, if you guys go there and you hang out there and you know the place, it's like two towns. There's the young section and then there's the quiet family. <laughs> Chill out, have my beer, don't listen to kids screaming. <laughs> and that's this site. And that's why I bought a cottage there five years ago, and that's why I'm building a new one right next to this one. What happens if this goes through, then people sell. And people don't buy because they don't want to live by side, residential, commercial type. So another corporation buys it, rips the cottage down. Since we allowed one duplex semi-detached, you open the floodgates for the next one. Just like what happened when the first three-story one snuck through, you can't stop the other ones if they give you the same reasoning. The couple of tenants that do live adjacent to that have mentioned how close to the property lines, fence or no fence, you know when your neighbor is too close. And it just doesn't go away whether you see it or not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo. Any questions for Leo? Councillor Columbus, please. Just, Mr. Singer, did you say that there was only 13 inches between the property line and the building? No, one of the variants that they asked for at the time, uh, side yard stated that uh, it was six meters, which works out to 19 and a half feet, and they're asking for 0.33 which makes it one foot point zero eight, which puts it just under 13 inches. From the property line to the wall of the building? Um, it? it's, the one that I'm referring to it says side yard. Okay, well perhaps the staff can clear that up because it's pretty difficult to uh, get <coughs> scaffolding and stuff in there. To build. Alicia, like, go ahead. The front yard was 19 and a half feet and they're asking to take it down to four and a half, four point nine, which is just under five feet the mayor it's the existing cottage so it is an existing situation for that specific variance it's the one um, on the north part of the property councillor height thank you mayor luke uh, through you to the deputation you mentioned you were building a new cottage w would that be the one immediately to the west of here yes it was okay thank you thank you any other questions Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to the application? Come on down, please, and give us your name. Hi, my name is Karen Castleton Bauer. I'm a property owner in Turkey Point. Um, as a family, we've summered there over 50 years, and now I own my own property as well. So um, development in Turkey Point historically has always been limited by the carrying capacity of, of septic systems and that issue versus, you know, um, seasonal residents versus permanent residents and whatnot. Um, now we have safe access requirements, which is a legitimate concern, and I'm glad it's, it's going forward through council. Um, what I'd like to just draw attention to, um, is the secondary plan that Norfolk County did adopt back in October 2009. And in it, section 11.6, um, I'll just read a real short clip. Urban areas of Port Dover and Port Rowan are identified as urban tourism nodes and are intended to be the focus of tourism and economic activities within the um, Lakeshore Special Policy Area. So I just wanted to bring that to the forefront again. Um, the infrastructure is in place in Port Rowan and in Port Dover. Um, we heard about compact development. Yes, again, the infrastructure is in place there. So if the county wishes to promote year-round tourism-related activities, as it does in its um, tourism its uh, plans, um, I would suggest that they again look at um, what they have adopted formally 
and, and focus that in those tourism nodes as identified. Okay, that's everything. Thank you, Karen. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to this application? Yes, sir, come forward. We need your name, please. Yeah, my name is uh, Harley. If you will, just pull that microphone down. We, we would like to hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Take your time. Okay, my name is Harley Pohl. I actually live at 336 Cedar Drive in Turkey Point. And there's a bunch of stuff that, uh, actually I've got a sheet here for a petition that I think uh, Leo actually gave you one too that can have some more signatures that are different of the people that do not want this. Some of the background is I've been in Turkey Point for, worked there and lived there for a lot of years, actually at the present address since 2006. Ridgewood Marine, one question I have with Ridgewood is, over the years, like it's had, it started out years ago back in the 30s as an auto shop, then it switched over to a marina, and it's, throughout the years, it stayed as a marina until it was about 2006, 2008, before the business finally collapsed. But it was, I had the marine business there, it was about the only thing, and a few of the people that said that it was a good idea to get rid of it, said, oh, it's not a very good business, but it was a very viable business. It was very, very busy at the time. Like, it was basically the whole year it was working. Turned a lot of money and stuff like that for the people. But they just got to the point where they're getting old and wanted to retire, so they sold it. Then the next people bought it. It went down the... It was poor, poor management. It drove it into the ground. And one of the questions I've... Some of the people... Actually, somebody else brought it up, too. There used to be some oil old oil storage tanks there from the used oil. That was never cleaned up. And as they were saying, has there ever been a study to check if that oil was cleaned out, decamped, decontaminated and stuff in that area? Just one question I've always, I asked once before, nobody really knew, so I thought, well, has it been done? And if you go through and read in your paperwork for the demolition, if it's been a business, an industrial business before, or if it had oil storage there, it should have been done. But I've never seen anybody say anything about that. Another thing, the building, the house that's there now, on that one end, on the, beyond the north side, that they built, the reason why it's a two-story is it used to be an old house, like a mobile home, with an addition on the side. The mobile home, basically, it was there since back when, before anybody can even realize, but the frame and everything else started to collapse, so they went through got the variant, they were going to go through and repair it, found it was a, was a waste of time to even repair it, it was so bad. They got the variants to go through and actually get, at that time, they got the height, so they can go with that two-story house, but they had to keep with a small footprint to match up to what the trailer is. That's why it's the size it is. Now all of a sudden they want to go through with these huge, basically they're doubling up the sizes and trying to put them in there. And that's what a lot of people, like, People on that uh, petition, they're saying the same thing. To go with that extra size and the height, now all of a sudden everybody's going to be looking down in their backyard. Are, are they going to have privacy? Not likely. And people are worried that, okay, stuff is going to get thrown in their backyards and stuff like that, and that nature. Another thing that people are asking about is the drainage. There will be a problem with the drainage there because it was, I believe it was three years or four years ago, they, changed, they had to redo all the drain on Arnold Street because it was just getting to be a mess. If, even now, if it's a good rain, it does have a bit of a problem. It works, but it's, it's a little slower. If they go through and put more of the buildings and they put more gravel driveways in there, it's gonna go through, that water's gonna come to the street and it's gonna try and go down Arnold Street and it's not gonna make it. Because <laughs> they didn't put the drains, they, I didn't think they planned on the big buildings like that at the time, so they're gonna run into problems with that. They were saying about the access. They've got two streets. Okay, if you ever go through in the summertime, even in the wintertime, it's even worse. But if we've got a good rainstorm, the old hill road, you're not gonna be able to get up there very easy with a car or any way of getting out of there because the water comes down that stretch of road. It's such a steep grade, it floods out. 
and then it just floods everything right below and it'll start flooding out the street. I've seen it before and it's going to be worse right now because for some reason the lake levels are up and you could dig down right now about a foot and you're running into water. It's coming up so bad and it's, it's basically coming from the lake. So if they go through and add more of the road, like the parking, which is actually going to be right on the, pretty close to the street, judging from that picture, it's going to make it fun. <laughs> with being there year round to go through and watch that, especially in the winter time too. The snow, if it happens to rain, all of a sudden freezes, it makes that a big ice pond. It's going to be even tougher to get out of town. But, okay. And so, uh, another problem that a lot of the people are talking about there on the petition is they're worried about if they've got four more extra buildings there. In a sense, that's what you're building, four more cottages. The parties are gonna be a lot worse and there's, there's gonna be a lot more damage. Usually as it works out now, like even just a while ago on the Easter weekend, there's so many big parties going on even then. A bunch of the signs got broken down in Tricky Point. There's a bunch of other stuff that actually, there's a couple signs I pulled in off the lake because they just rip them out of the ground, they'll throw them out in the water. And you can guarantee you're going to be picking beer bottles, cans, all sorts of garbage up on the street because they walk down the street and they just throw it off on your lawn. They don't, a lot of the younger generation, I don't know what's going on with them, they don't respect it. And a lot of people are worried that there's going to be more litter. And even on the Friday and the Saturday night on the, the Easter weekend, those parties were going until midnight. I can hear them in my backyard and I know the one was probably about three blocks away and they were just giving her not. Oof. We had four more on here. This is going to be real good. We won't get any sleep. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a concern for the other people that are actually right behind it. And that's the same thing that they were saying. All the people that live right in that area, they're the ones that are most affected. None of them really want it. The best plan that they say that we should do is, yeah, the commercial building, that building was probably built, the, the cement part was built back in the mid-30s. The newer section, the metal part of that building was done, I can't remember exactly when, but I know it was in the mid 80s, because I was there when they were rebuilt that part. So yeah, the old cement part, if you look at it, it's starting to crumble, something's gonna have to be done with it. So if they tore it down, be no, no, no sheds a tear on that, but what they could do is just go with us, if they went the same as what they did on the south side of Arnold Street, where they have three small, single dwellings, It'd be more adaptable and more aesthetic to the rest of the area. If they're trying to do these duplexes like the one that's there, and there's some people that see that one aren't really happy with it because it's too high and it just looks out of place, it, it would be more in line with what the neighbors really want around there. Some of the other people that I was reading that say that, oh, it's a great idea. Yeah, it will help, but they don't have to look at that problem all the time. Another problem is going to be parking. In the summertime, if you go through on a Saturday or Sunday, you can go through on that whole stretch, it's 70 some odd meters or whatever, there will be at least 20 to 30 cars parked on that. And what it is is people park there, they'll go over to the beach, they'll go over and spend time at a friend's cottage, and basically you're going to end up losing a lot of that. And if it works out, if people can't park there, they're not going to stay in town. They'll start leaving and then eventually it's going to start hurting the tourism. Like, as it is right now, a lot of the businesses that are there, like the restaurants and the hotel, they are struggling. Anybody you talk to, like, for some reason, the economy's not, they say it's good, but it's not that good. <laughs> and any of the restaurants, like, the only one that really seems to be doing good right now is the one at the other end at the sandbar. The hotel, they're struggling. The other one at the other end, Turkey Vegas, they're struggling. They just... Like people say, well, and actually somebody asked me a couple of years ago, okay, that old commercial building, what can we do about turning it into a small bar? I said, it's not really worth it. it. The bars right now in Turkey Point are suffering. Why go through and add to the problem? What they can use your commercial building for, not really much of anything. Best plan would be to tear it down and just put a small, you could split it and put two small cottages. The ones that they have on the south side of Arnold, or, yeah, the south side of Arnold they're small. The one, actually, that's supposed to be single family, but the one family's got six kids, and they seem to work really well in that, and they're quite happy, so it would blend with the neighbors, and everybody would be happy about it. But this business to go with 
a real high? Do you want somebody looking down in your backyard while you're sitting there relaxing? Not likely. <laughs> That's about as much as I can. Yeah, they, yeah they, they say to go with the residential, but to just make it smaller foot, like they're saying it's a smaller footprint than the commercial. It is, but it's not really that much smaller by the time you add in the parking, add in all the other problems that are going to go with it. So. It's your choice whether you're gonna, what you're going to do, but. <laughs> Anything further, Harley? Uh, that's about as much as I can remember for now. Okay. Um, if you haven't anything further, I'll ask if there's any questions for you, sir. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Through you to the deputation. You, you mentioned when it was a, a marina and they fixed boats and things like that. Did you own your cottage then? No. No, you didn't. So you. No, I lived elsewhere because I worked at the marina, and I wasn't going to live across the street. <laughs> you, you worked at that marina. Yep. So you, then you're aware of how busy it was in those yep. days. Yeah, I was worked there for 20 years. And you feel that the marina was less noisy than the proposed development? Uh, overall, I would say yes, because most of the work, that, like that, was basically just a, an area we did a, most of the repair work. A lot of the other, like running of the engines and stuff like that was done down at the marina itself. So it wasn't really at that yard. Because they own two different shops, but if you were someone like Jones Marine who owned a shop in town in Tilsonburg and they took over this building, they could fire up engines right in here. Yeah, they Open could. headers, wide open, right? Yep. Now you mentioned that the businesses are suffering, that, w that we need more business down there, but you're against the intensification for the, for the rental units to get people down to the businesses. I'm surprised the by that. The thing is, the business, business itself is, like, these want to become residential, not business. Business itself, like, to, to have the, even the general store down there, there's a couple different little restaurants and stuff like of that nature. They're all hurting because of the economy, for some reason, just not helping them. But as far as, like, rentals, actually, you talk to some people, they've, they've gone through and rented, rented out their cottages in the past. They're having a struggle trying to even rent them right now. Why, we don't know. Okay, People just don't seem to want to come to Turkey Point. Yeah, cause, well, I think because Long Point's nicer and they're all going there. That's what I hear from my owners. <laughs> thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not a plug for Long, Long Point, is there? Anyone else? <laughs> That's what he heard, he said. That's what he heard. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition? Or in general, I'll have this lady first and then Mr. Whitworth, you next. Uh, my name is Cindy Gunter and I live at 328, the Red Cottage, directly across from the proposed application. I am here tonight, um, here tonight with strongest objections to this application at 325 Cedar Drive. I have no, ap uh, I, pardon me, I don't do this very well. I have no op opposition to changing the land use from commercial to residential if the lots were in keeping with the current lot sizes. My objection is that the provisions, which basically turns one lot into three and greatly reducing the lot sizes below the minimum requirements to build two duplex apartments. We are concerned, my husband and I, are concerned that this will turn the area into a high-density housing instead of a single vacation home. We also believe that by allowing the elimination of any lot size, you are defeating the purpose of having these requirements in the first place. And we are and willing to be setting a precedent for more applications to change single-use lots into multi-use rental apartments. We are also concerned about the parking. With the lots greatly reduced, where are the visitors going to park? And who is going to enforce the block streets and the parking on the streets? We strongly believe this will decrease the value of the cottages in the immediate area, as no one looking for vacation homes is going to buy property in the neighborhood that has multi-purpose housing. 
We have spent over 14 years and thousands of dollars to turn our vacation home into one that fits into this neighborhood and provides our family with quiet place to vacation and relax away from the busy world around us, just like everyone else. This proposal will reverse that aspect. We are asking that you reject this application for zoning bylaw amendment and stick to the lot sizes that conform with the continuity of the surrounding neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Hearing none. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Whitworth, please, in opposition or in general. It's in general, and it'll be very uh, short. Mr. Mayor and Councillors, uh, I'm familiar with that property. and I believe 60 years ago there was a dance hall on that property. I think we probably somebody here, some of the people remember that. And uh, I wondered if that dance hall could legally be rebuilt now or another entertainment facility built as it is zoned. Uh, if you're asking that question, I'm going to look at staff here and ask on that uh, resort area commercial zone that's there now, could we reestablish or build a dance hall? Through the mayor, yes, we could. And uh, if, I, if this zoning didn't go through and I was to buy that property, could I have some of my bike, biker friends camp on it over the night for a free beer or something? Through the mayor, no, camping is not permitted. Well, we'd call it something else, maybe. That was all. <laughs> that's all. I'd have, I'd have bikers there next weekend if that was my problem. Uh, I, I see a question, Mr. Whitworth. That would be Councillor Columbus. Yes, to the planners, you say you can establish a dance hall which could attract probably 150, 200 people. And loud noise bends. And so how do you deal with the ingress-egress issue if you can put a dance hall there but you can't put some duplexes there? Through the mayor, the access and egress issue deals with new development. It doesn't limit people from ever using their property. So if something's there already, then that's not an issue. It's what, something we have to consider when something new is being proposed. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Councillor Black. Mayor Luke, uh, through you to the deputation. And I uh, haven't seen you for a while. Uh, Ted, I've actually missed you, believe, believe it or not. Okay, you two. L uh, save that for later. Let's, uh, and, let's uh, stick we to were the a little lively, application. Maybe. But he brings up the, uh, the point of uh, the, uh, the old dance hall, and I, I believe it was called the Kenmar, and, and I do actually do remember attending You're that. right. That was it. Yeah, and uh, you know, the main thing that happened there was a lot of drinking and a lot of fighting. And a lot of noise. Any other questions for Mr. Whitworth? Thank you. Thank for you, Ted. Shortest speech of my life. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general? You've spoken once. Uh, I'm looking for anyone else. Yes, sir, you may come forward. If he wants to say it, no, no. Uh, my name is Wayne Colbrand. I have a cottage at 306 Cedar Drive, which is only a couple of blocks away. But um, there's also an empty lot three, three doors down from me. And my concern with, with this is what some of the, the other ones have said. Once you open this door, you're not going to stop the rest. That lot is narrow, but it's wider than what you're allowing there. And it's also just around the corner from where the three-story went. So let's say we put a three-story duplexes there. You've got six apartments there. My other concern is the misconception about parking. They say you've got a duplex that has space for two parking, two parking spaces, two cars. If you look at the surrounding area to the single homes in there, mine included, I've got a park, my driveway is big enough to accommodate six vehicles. This is a vacation area. Families come down to visit families. Two vehicles is not gonna cut it at any weekend, at any time. If you look around there, go down there on a Saturday or Sunday, each place you're gonna see at least four vehicles when they have family reunions or people, the visitors come down, there's six, four minimum per dwelling. 
would probably be insufficient on most weekends. And that the problem that has been brought up again is the rental units, and I've seen, I've been down there 20 years, and I've spent over $130,000 fixing up my cottage. A year ago, a very nice cottage, three doors down from us, got bought up as a rental unit. It is now party central. Every weekend, and this is what happens, this is what I see happening to Turkey Point. Instead of going to a vacation resort area, we're going, we are commercializing it. Call it a resident, call it whatever you want. The sole purpose here is to rent it, to rent it, to make money. They say right now, okay, May to October during the summer. Ice fishing is very popular down there when we can have ice. Snowmobilers come down there in the winter. You're trying to tell me these developers, if they get a chance to rent them out through the winter, they're not going to do it? Sure they are. Their purpose is to make money. Can we have their phone number so we can start calling them at 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning while their tenants are destroying the rest of Turkey Point? While they're screaming and yelling, and, and uh, the one down from me, he, he brings in a DJ every weekend. Those people are up on their roofs. When they leave to go to the hotel, I went down uh, yesterday to my cottage and my emergency sign was ripped up again. And this is what we get every weekend. I know part of that is an enforcement problem and that's something this council is going to have to start dealing with. So my suggestion is, yeah, single family dwellings would be more in uh, into the concept with the surrounding area. A lot easier to control and a lot more rec uh, relaxing. And that's what I've seen and that's why I bought down at Turkey Point. So that my, my kids could come down and now my grandkids and hopefully my great grandkids that don't have to be hassled every Saturday night when they're sitting out on our front porch by all these people going by, that we can sleep through the night, even with our windows closing, without listening to the thumping and the screaming and the, and the hooting and howling going on all around us. So I sincerely ask you to accept the committee's report and reject this. Thank you. Questions for the deputy or the speaker, please. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone else in attendance this evening who wishes to speak in opposition or in general? Yes, please, if you come forward and give us your name. Hello, my name is Donna Singer, and uh, we just bought, uh, we're, we're the ones that, you showed the picture, we're just building our cottage, and the dance hall was on that property. That makes a difference, but it's, I just wanted to make that correction because we dug out the foundation. Questions? Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to this application? Hearing none. Mr. Arians, do you wish to respond, uh, respond to any of the uh, comments made? You may. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I do briefly want to address some of the comments. Uh, the concern was raised that this is going to set a precedent. As a planning consultant, I, I can tell you, I, I, I look for precedents because that helps you know, my argument and that helps my case. So the precedent here is we have a deteriorating large commercial building and property, zoned commercial, being redeveloped. How many other precedents are there like that in Turkey Point? There aren't. So from that standpoint, it doesn't set a precedent. It's a unique application. And you can say that when someone else comes forward with an undesirable redevelopment plan. This one is different. It was a commercial property that's no longer viable, no longer appropriate. Yes, council did what it did because of those reasons. One gentleman suggested that two parking spaces were not enough. Well, clearly we do have that parking on the road allowance available. Uh, and we do have parking on the driveway portion of the road allowance. There was a concern about property values. And, and again, I, I need to remind the residents that property values with a derelict commercial eyesore 
is not very helpful either. So from that standpoint, redeveloping a property, building a, a very aesthetic new project enhances property values. And as far as rental and, and renters partying and whooping it up, that can happen in any single family cottage currently anywhere where people can rent their homes. So from that standpoint, it is an enforcement. We do have uh, landlords who live in Turkey Point who are residents who are part of that community and, and policing certainly will be dealt with. Privacy was a concern and as I pointed out on one of my slides, the interface with the existing homes is typically a side yard and the typical setback is only five feet, 1.2, 1.3 meters. These cottages are six meters, seven, nine and 12 meters from that lot line, much farther away than a typical side yard. So we are enhancing privacy and overview. The one gentleman who mentioned working at the marina raised an important point that there could be contamination on this site with old oil and gas and, and whatnot from the marina complex. Well, as part of the site plan requirements, we will do a phase one site assessment and a phase two if necessary, and we can obtain a record of site condition from the Ministry of Environment, making sure that when you transfer land from commercial to residential, uh, it's, it's a safe environment for, uh, for future occupants. The one lady read an excerpt from the secondary plan and suggested that this type of redevelopment should go in Port Dover and in Port Rowan. Well, that same secondary plan designates this as a low-density residential area, and singles and semis are permitted in low-density residential areas. So it is a permitted use upon this property. So having said that, members of council, I think what I would ask you to, to consider is planning applications like this, it's a balancing act. You, you, you have so many competing interests, so many variables, and each of those variables, each of those uh, com competing components ha has certain weight or certain importance to them. When you consider all the applications before you, all the merits of this application, all the comments from the residents, again, I ask you, what really is the adverse impact in redeveloping this property? And I hope you would agree with me that there is no adverse impact and that you will support this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Councillor uh, Brunton, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, John, just... I want to get something clear in my mind here. The footprint for the new structures yes, sir. and the footprint for the existing structure are X number of meters. And then there's the commercial building that would be removed. Correct? Correct. Uh, what's the, what's the, the square meterage of all those? Is it, does it go down? And I know they're two-story, but the footprint is what I'm looking at. So the existing building has a footprint of 402 square meters. This is the commercial building only. Okay. Each of the proposed new buildings have a footprint of 103 square meters. So the two of them together, the footprint is 206. The existing commercial is 403. So the commercial is twice as large of a footprint as the two new cottages. And the existing cottage. That was just the two new ones. The yeah, what's the existing the ex Sorry, the existing cottage is, I, I don't have that measurement in front of me, but it's significantly less. It's maybe 90, 80 <coughs> square meters in footprint, sir. Okay. It is still we're nowhere near the 400. No, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, uh, anything else from members of council? I have one question uh, to our planning department, and this is just for my clarification, and I'm going right back to the, uh, the first page on page seven. And uh, certainly, I have read the introduction, the background, and from reading that, I understand the request to rezone from basically resort commercial to resort residential, but is it the two special provisions, four point? One eight and four. Uh, sorry, fourteen one eight and fourteen seven one eight. Is it those two provisions combined that allow this to be duplex? 
in this area? So the existing special provision 14.18 would be removed and the new one 718 would include permissions for semis, yes. So 1418 would be removed, okay, thank you. And 14718 would then be a new special provision allowing the semis. Yeah. If this was a straight rezoning application from commercial resort, or resort commercial, pardon me, to resort re residential, if that was the application, not the special provision 14.718, uh, would then it permit that rezoning two separate, let's say, single family cottages or resort residences? Yeah, it would permit, if it was just two resort residential, and yes. no special permit provision, it wouldn't meet the lot size requirements, but the permitted use would be only single detached vacation homes. And would the lot area be sufficient for two? No, it wouldn't even be sufficient. Only one? For, it wouldn't even be sufficient for one. Because of the one acre? Yes. Septic requirement? Yeah. Got it. I wasn't just too sure. The province really has us, don't they? You don't have to answer that. That's just a frustration comment. Anything else from council? If not, I would then like a mover and seconder uh, to close the public meeting. Councillor Columbus has moved. Wells has second that we do now close this public meeting. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. So, council members, need your uh, direction here. Councillor Height, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Today I brought in my lakeshore management plan for us to clear up a few things about the access and egress because Turkey Point and Long Point are actually addressed two different ways in this book. Okay, there, there are study zones, Turkey Point being DS2, DS1 is Long Point. Okay, emergency response, it says right here, the Long Point Region Conservation Authority already has in place. Okay, I am just uh, asking the clerk, uh, I'll have the clerk clarify uh, my question. The clerk was, uh, is, uh, is this an order? Because there is no motion on the floor uh, that pertains to this application, so I'm not. Uh, I'm going to look for clarification. I, I don't know where you're going with this, whether you're going to be speaking in support or against something, because there's nothing here yet to discuss until we get a motion. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, as usual, you're correct. Yes, uh, we we need a because, motion pardon, to, what, to discuss. I didn't hear that. Did you? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. We need to go right to direction from council and then. What you're uh, saying would be in order. Approval, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry? Is, I'm moving for approval of this okay. application, and this would be why. Okay, and, and I will need a seconder, and then you may continue. So I have a... Uh, Also, Ron, were you seconding it? And just before you continue, bear with me. The clerk has told me that if the motion that will be discussed is for approval, it would be subject to site plan approval. Are you in agreement with that? I guess so. Well, it's yes or no. <laughs> well, yes, then. Um, it moves us along. Yeah, because obviously if it was recommended for refusal, you would, there would be no site plan. And I would put uh, subject to site plan now we have a motion on the floor for approval, and now we will debate it. And now, sir, you are in order. Fire away. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the Long Point Region Conservation Authority already has in place a comprehensive emergency response plan. Okay, this is in our Lakeshore study. It says, if the threat to safety is high enough, then the Lakeshore area should be evacuated. Within DS2, 3, and 4, and Turkey Point is DS, DSZ2, the decision to evacuate should rest with the municipal flood coordinator overseeing the municipal flood response plan. I assume we have one of these, surely, because this plan is from 1989. So we must have one. Maybe staff could answer that. Who is our emergency response, or no, municipal flood coordinator? Because we, we have to have an FTE, we probably have three. 
Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, you're correct that those policies have been in place for quite some time, but there has not been a plan done to date, so I cannot answer that question. It's 1989, and we've made no progress on that. I'll let that one go for now. I see we're moving right along. Now, Turkey, Beach has, Turkey Point Beach has its own policy. There are six criteria for development, including new development. Okay, the progressive plan of raising dwellings and land above a flood elevation of 176.5. Does this application meet it? Yes, it does. Check. No basements or weeping tile beds or of septic systems. Odd. At some point in time, 1989, this recommended holding tanks are no longer allowed. It doesn't have a basement. Check. Raising of land above the flood elevation should be encouraged. Raising of access egress roadways should form a priority component. We're slowly moving on that one. Dwellings that are raised or new dwellings that are constructed above the specified flood elevation must be supported on pile foundations or perimeter bearing walls. Okay. Conversion of existing seasonal residential dwellings land uses or and land uses to full-time residential uses is not recommended until flooding hazards are overcome the building envelope overcomes the hazards and any new development on existing lots of record be allowed above flood elevation only the plan doesn't say that we can't support this application what we're doing here is turning a commercial property into a residential property and yes it will be a rental property I look at the pictures here, I see the character. I see smaller characters. There are three-story mansions down in Turkey Point that I'm assuming somebody at some point in time approved those applications. Okay, the lot size, we saw where there's five lots on less land than this. Five houses. So at some point in time, from 1989 until then, they were allowed to build more houses on smaller lots. Okay, you know, the parking, is it there? It's there, it's being used for park. There's parking there now. A commercial property would use more parking. If this was a, a boat repair place, there'd be boats everywhere. Long Point's mayhem when you try to get down there with boats, just from the amount of people taking their boats into the marinas. The septic has been addressed. Our tourism department says that we need accommodations in Norfolk County, and this I have to agree on. We need more high-end housing places for people to stay. When people come here and stay overnight, they spend more money. This isn't day trippers coming and spending $7, right? Not all tenants are barn animals. Yeah, you'll get the bad ones, but we do have bylaw in place. And you can call them, or you can call one of us, and we'll call them. I know how it works, all right? But, you know, some of the tenants that you'll come across are probably really good people and could end up being friends of yours. You know, they're, they're not all savages, and I think that having the two different floors it would be a landlord's problem if you had incompatible tenants because if you have somebody who's rocking the joint downstairs and a young family upstairs that's going to be a landlord's headache and I don't, I don't think we'll have that problem here you know obviously this commercial zone is not viable it's been sitting empty for a long time and I think this is a, a really good project to move ahead with they've obviously done their business case they feel that it's financially viable for them to work it, but they need those four apartments to rent. And uh, Turkey Point will look a lot better for it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Height. Councillor Black, you're next, please, to the motion. Okay. Uh, I'm going to speak against the motion, as um, I, I guess I usually do. And the reason why is because... Um, I've, I've lived here all my life, and I've been down to Turkey Point uh, quite often since the 1950s, and I've seen the evolution of Turkey Point. And um, let's make it clear, Turkey Point, Long Point, are hazard land, and they're hazard land for a reason. Uh, they're not what you call a safe place to build a home. And over time, the cottages that were built there, there, were, there weren't that many and they were only one story in height. They weren't insulated. Um, they didn't have elaborate septic systems or water or anything like that. And the ones that were there, um, I guess they weren't a problem because there just were, there weren't that many of them. But over time, and what I've seen, I've seen uh, Turkey Point change its character. 
And it's no longer what I consider a resort where people live there in the summertime. They don't. They live there all year round. And there is no monitoring of it. And there is an OMB ruling that says that there's only 75 identified permanent residents. I, and yet, who cares? Uh, nobody pays any attention to that. And why was that OMB ruling made? Well, it had something to do with the fact that it's designated hazard land. Uh, it's susceptible to flooding, to storms. It puts people's safety at risk. And when floods do come, um, the water table is very low. It's like one foot underneath the ground. So what happens to the septic systems? What happens to the, the water? Uh, and again, how do you get it in and out? Yes, um, there is two uh, ways to get in and out. The old way, and many people that have lived here most of their life know that uh, the story where, and I, I think maybe we even had to do it once, is that old access is so steep you had to turn your car around and back up and use the lower gear to get up. So it's not what you call the best way to get in and out of Turkey Point. The other one, yes, it's, it's okay, that's good. Um, I've listened to the people that are opposing it and I do agree with them. Um, the character of Turkey Point has changed. Uh, it's two-story buildings and even more. I see a dormer up on top. It's even more than two stories. The parking is a problem down there. It will just exacerbate that. Um, the drainage issue, which was made light of, that yes, they can solve that. Quite frankly, you know, by, by increasing the level of their property, it's just going to put the, the water onto somebody else's property, and it's not draining now. We already have that problem of drainage, and now we're going to increase it. So I, I see it's, it's being, Turkey Point is being overbuilt, uh, should be left as is, and uh, even the Committee of Adjustments allowing the second stories and more bedrooms, uh, bigger footprints, so now these tiny lots are, are being practically covered by building. And uh, even our, our own policies say that if you build a house, you need an acre to do it for septic systems, and yet in Turkey Point, you don't need that, and, and, it's, and, and if any place, you need even more. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I guess I've said enough to uh, uh, get my point across, and I will not support the motion on the floor. I would request a recorded vote. Thank you. Councillor Brunton, and then Councillor Columbus, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, I'm in support of the application, and uh, I'll give you my reasons. I think, just in summary, real quick, it's a smart reuse of infilling on this piece of property. A um, few issues I'm going to just mention. Parking. If you go down to Turkey Point on a Saturday or a Sunday in the summer, parking is an issue everywhere. At least they're providing some parking. My... Uh, in-laws had a cottage there from the 50s. Never had a problem with water. The only problem we did have was Hurricane Hazel blew the cottage away one day. And uh, it was a, just as Councillor Black mentioned, a kind of a wooden shack, if I might say, but it was rebuilt. The wind never touched it after that. And the flooding never had a problem. I've seen water up to the Turkey Point Hotel but you could still drive out. So the access egress issue in my mind is, you realize they want to deal with it. Councillor Height says we do have a policy, flood warning or whatever, get out. If you think you need to get out, if you've got a three storage cottage, uh, climb to the top. The footprint, as I asked this gentleman, uh, the planner previously, is a lot less than what's there now. As far as new runoff, the runoff for stormwater is going to be less. It's less, it's, there's less, there's more impervious now than there will be in the end. And to me, that's a bonus for stormwater. Turkey Point's flat. Doesn't matter what you do down there. If there's a heavy, heavy rain, there's going to be water laying around. The, I don't think the people that, 
are not in favor of this application realize that the many uses there are with commercial property down there. Yes, there can be a dance hall. It's not up to this council to approve it. The zoning now allows that. So they could create a dance hall and put a band in there and they could have all the motorcycle people there as Mr. Whitworth indicated. That can happen. I think that this development, as he's shown us on his uh, screen here earlier tonight with the two new properties in the existing building, is a much more improved property than what's there today. So I'll be supporting it, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Columbus, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will uh, not be supporting the, the motion, although uh, Mr. Arians there has done an admirable job for the applicant, I must say. And uh, I just believe that this is uh, not compatible with the neighboring properties. And uh, parking is certainly a, an issue. We heard that two vehicles won't cut it because <laughs> I'll bet there'll be a lot of families visiting. There'll be a lot more than two vehicles in the parking lot. They'll be parking all over the road. And already we're getting complaints from pedestrians about uh, traffic safety down there and more overhead street lighting requested in that area. Also, uh, we talked about drainage and these these uh, two properties that will be built will be uh, built up and the drainage will be more of an issue. And uh, we heard uh, earlier that these, these will eventually be severed, these units. So down the road, they will likely come up for sale because these people are, are in in business of doing this type of uh, activity, uh, renting and making an income and investment here. So I see the potential, although these people that own it now say that they will only occupy it between May and October, who's to say down the road that somebody won't be occupying it year round like some of the other uh, places that are being occupied year round. And uh, our, our planning staff says there's no monitoring of this situation. So it is taking place all the time, and that's the way I feel it's going to go. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Sonnenberg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be uh, speaking in favor of this application. Mr. Mayor, how often have we heard what a beautiful county Norfolk is? Well, you want to know something? It's not all beautiful. Pay attention while you're driving up and down our roads and our streets. We have a lot of derelict buildings. And any time anyone wants to remove a derelict building and replace it with a new structure, I'm going to support it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other speakers? Hearing none, we've asked for a recorded vote, so we will uh, call the question and have the clerk do a recorded vote. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. Councillor Brunton. Yes. Well, you know something? I should have read it, and I apologize for that. So thank you for keeping me on my toes. Certainly, uh, Councillor Height has moved, and you have seconded approval. So the motion is very similar to uh, in the staff report, but it uh, goes like this. That the application of LBS Group, Inc. and care of Brook Hayward, 16 Harem Road, in Paris, Ontario, affects the lands described as part lot 197, lots 196 and 202. This is plan, uh, plan 190, the geographic township of Charleville in Norfolk County, is to amend the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw 1Z 2014 uh, that this application be approved for reasons set out in report DCS 1721 subject to site plan approval and that public input has been received for this application and was considered in part of this decision. Are you okay with that? Something there I, that I, I just strike the at for the reasons as set out in the staff report because the staff You're report absolutely yeah. right. So, recommendation is for approval subject to site plan. Mr. Clerk. Councillor Brunton? Yes. Councillor Black? No. Councillor Wells? Yes. Councillor Sonnenberg? Yes. Councillor Height? Yes. Councillor Geisens? Yes. Councillor Columbus? Yes. 
Mayor Luke? No. The motion carries. Thank you. Motion's carried. I should say five to three. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Columbus. Yes. On this issue, uh, what options do the opponents have if they wanted to take this uh, motion that was coming into effect uh, further? Alicia or Pam, could you answer that? Through the mayor, there's 20 days from the notice of approval to appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board. 20, 20 day uh, period and uh, in that time anyone who wishes can uh, well that has been here or put an objection in writing can appeal to the OMB. I would like to, Councillor Brunton, you're looking for uh, probably a break. Uh, if you wish we can, we have two more applications. Uh, do you wish to break for 15 minutes? I'm seeing a lot of this. Well, let's have a recess and we'll come back at 10 after seven, please. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no foe, no foe. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no foe. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My Cullen County home Hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. Soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No. No foe, no foe, we know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no foe, you won't be a stranger long. 
Take in the small town atmosphere Be amazed at all that we grow Like our kids that go and see the world And can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road 